Jesus is my rock. That's how I roll. Welcome to another episode of California Preaching. I'm in my holy closet right now. And gosh, you guys, I have just been thinking so much about my father these past couple of days. It's just really strange how he's just been weighing heavily on my mind. And, you know, I, um, it's hard for me to talk about my dad because we had, um, a very bittersweet relationship and um he's no longer with us um he died actually when i was pregnant with vance and vance is about to turn 20 in october so um yeah i lost him almost 20 years ago and uh he had a very serious um a liver disease, cirrhosis of the liver. And he was a notorious drug addict. My father um, had uh, used heroin for uh, a couple of decades. And um, he then quit doing the heroin, but just continued drinking. And needed a kidney tra um, liver transplant and he went on the liver transplant list and received um, a new liver um, which I have mixed feelings about because um, there are people who you know um, are at risk of losing their lives or are definitely facing death and need a new liver and would do absolutely anything to um keep you know their lives um and would do go to any length and do whatever the doctors told them um after receiving their transplant and unfortunately that was not something that my father did he continued to drink after he got his um, liver transplant and there's a lot of shame wrapped around that because um, I just am sort of you know mortified that he did that but I also have to remind myself that alcoholism is a disease I know everybody doesn't agree with that but um, I do believe that alcoholism um, is a disease and like I said my, my father was notorious for his drug use and he was, you know, like the worst of the worst. Um, and, uh, this dress, but, uh, by the way, she knows everything about me. Um, this one back here. Yeah. So <clears throat> I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about my last moments with my dad. Um, makes me emotional just thinking about it because he was at UCLA for um, a good month before he died, um, a solid month, I would say. And he was jaundice, um, his belly stuck out like he was pregnant, his teeth were yellow, his eyes were yellow, uh, his gums were yellow, um, and they had to drain you know, him several times a week. Uh, and it was very, very, very sad to witness. And um, it was uncomfortable for me too, because I had a soul connection with my father. You know, I felt extremely connected to my dad. I loved spending time with my dad. I loved taking beach walks with my dad. I loved, we used to write songs together when I was a little girl, I would get on his lap and we'd sit on the piano together and we would write songs. And I remember there was like a little fishbowl on the piano. And one day we wrote um, about the fish that was inside the fishbowl going all around the world, his world. And it was such a cute song. I wish we had recorded that, but, um, my dad had a lot of beautiful attributes and he had some attributes that were um, less than beautiful. And um, I've had to live with that uh, reality. And 
So saying goodbye to my dad, I think in some ways was even more difficult because of the fact that we had such a complicated relationship and I didn't, I knew I felt close to my dad, but I didn't have a close relationship with my father. I only saw my dad maybe once a year, I, I, not even. I mean, I saw my dad, my parents divorced when I was two. So I saw my father um, probably from the time I was 13 or 14, um, once a year um, after that. But before that, I did not see much of my dad at all because of his drug use. And my mother didn't really want me to be exposed to that. And I'm grateful for that. Obviously, um, I think she probably saved me from a lot of trauma, unnecessary trauma. But there were still a lot of abandonment issues there. I definitely felt um, abandoned by my father, even though I have heard from my sister and stuff that he did try and did make some efforts to see me, but that was kind of shut down because of his drug use. So I get it and I understand why my mother made that decision. But seeing my father in the hospital so vulnerable and knowing that he was coming to the end of his life and wanting so badly to say things to him. But I didn't want to scare him and I didn't want to make him think he was, you know, coming to the end of his life. Although I know he knew that he was a very intelligent man and I'm sure the doctors told him he was at end of life stage. But my point is, is that I wanted to have some deep talks with my dad that never happened. Um, and um, I, uh, I got a phone call one morning that um, he wasn't doing very well. So I got in my car and I drove to UCLA where he was and um, he was on a ventilator and he was pretty much in a coma. And um, a few of my family members had already gone in to sort of say their last words. They say that hearing is the last thing to go. So I figured I couldn't really have those deep conversations with him um, when I had the opportunity to do it. But maybe if I just say, what's on my heart, he'll hear me, even though he's in a coma. So that's what I did. I went in, um, my friend Courtney came with me and just kind of very eloquently <laughs> sat in the corner. Um, I don't know, part of me was just afraid to be alone with my dad. Um, I haven't really figured out <clears throat> why I was afraid to be alone with him, but there was some serious trepidation there about being with him um, all by myself. But anyway, um, yeah, I just remember saying to my father, obviously his eyes were closed and um, he was breathing heavily and um, there were a lot of wires attached to him and I remember there was a window behind him and the sun was coming through uh, sort of a sheer window covering and um, I remember thinking like this is no place to die I definitely wouldn't want to die here and um, I just said to my dad I said dad I want to thank you for all of those beautiful beach walks that we took. And I want to thank you for writing music with me. And I want to thank you for being the magnificent human being that you are. And um, thank you for being my dad and for um, all the beautiful music that you made and all the millions of people that you touched. And um, thank you for um, 
you know, um, being such a tender person, he really was very tender and kind of accessible emotionally. And I appreciated that. Um, but it was just, anyway, that's a whole nother story. But anyway, back to what I said. And then I said, um, you know, dad, I'm really sorry that we didn't have more of a relationship and that I never really got to know you and that you never really got to know me. And, um, that'll always be, you know, a, a wound for me. And I told him that I loved him so, so very much. And that I, um, I wasn't a Christian yet at that point. I mean, I was, I had already accepted Jesus into my heart when I was 12. So if I had, if it had been today, obviously I would have told him just, you know, go to the Lord. And, um, even if you can't say it out loud, just receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So, um, yeah, I told him I loved him and I kissed him and I knew that was the last time I was going to see him. And um, it's weird. I remember when I was like 10 years old, I don't know how I got his number because I lived on the West Coast and he lived on the East Coast. I got his number somehow. I don't know if my Aunt Rosie gave it to me or how I got the number. I'm not sure. But I did have my dad's number. And I remember I didn't tell my mom that I had his number because I, I thought she'd be really mad at me that I was reaching out to him. But I do remember some of our phone calls and I just remember how cool it was that I could just pick up the phone and dial my dad's number and hear his voice and he'd be on the other end. And he'd always say, what's up, China girl? How you doing, China girl? And we, um, I would just tell him what I did that day. And, but then, uh, I, I'm not really sure what happened. I'm not sure if he changed his number or if I stopped calling or if he stopped answering. But the phone calls did stop, um, and, uh, you know, I think this is really, obviously, it's kind of a no-brainer. It's definitely one of the reasons why I turned to drugs and alcohol at such a young age, because there was just so much pain there, and I didn't know what to do with the pain, and so much anxiety, and drugs were just a you know a great band-aid for that and it was a great way to numb out yeah to numb out and not feel anything um and I did that for a long time I did that for a very long time um my dad uh passed away I think it was on March 18th pretty sure and, um, and I, uh, gave birth to my son and then, um, well, I remember going to the funeral. I remember being pregnant at the funeral and, um, I remember I did this poem. Like I, I wrote this poem the night before the, cer the, uh, the ceremony, the, uh, funeral, the memorial and, um, I, I wrote a poem about, uh, a little girl having long hair. I had super, super long hair that went all the way down to my butt when I was a little girl. And, um, I remember the poem was something like all I ever wanted, um, was a relationship with my father. You know, my, the, the long haired daughter wanted a relationship with her. All she ever wanted was her father. It was really beautiful. And I have no idea where that letter is. Um, but I, just remember seeing all the faces at the funeral and just thinking, um, wow, so many people have showed up and, um, people who I kind of didn't expect to show up. It was in Palm Springs. That so was a bit of a drive and a lot of people there and a lot of people celebrating, you know, his life and, uh, his legend. And, um, 
I know that there are a lot of things um, that we could all say about my father uh, that, um, you know, are pretty well deserved. Um, and I understand that a lot of people may be confused by me having such strong feelings for somebody who um, may not have made the best decisions in his life, definitely didn't make the best decisions in his life. But my whole family is riddled with um, drug and alcohol addiction. Um, addiction just runs very, very strongly in my family. And um, so I hope that you guys will just have, you know, some compassion for the fact that he was my dad and I didn't have another dad. I thank goodness had a stepdad that I really loved and um, adored and he treated me very, very well. Um, you met him, Bob. He's way videos back, lots of videos back. And um, I will end it on this. My, I went to a Wilson, my Wilson Phillips concert in San Diego. I was at my Wilson Phillips concert and this um, security guy walked up to me and he said, China, there's somebody backstage that says they sang backup for the mamas and papas, for the new mamas and papas. My dad kind of revamped the whole mamas and papas thing in the 80s. And she'd like to come back and speak to you. And I was like, oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah, sure. Send her back. So um, she came back and she said, you know, I just had to tell you this. And I said, well, what is it? And she said, you know, when your dad was in the hospital, um, I w was bedside with him and he was still conscious and we were talking to each other. And I, and I said, John, you know, can I tell you about the gospel? Can I tell you about um, salvation and about Jesus Christ? And he was open to it and he said, yes, please. And she ex just laid out the gospel for him. And she said that she was with him for over an hour. And at the very end, she said, John, do you have any interest in receiving Jesus Christ as your savior? And he said, I do. And she said that he accepted the Lord as his savior. And um, it was just music to my ears, of course. I was so happy and it was answered prayer because I was, you know, just asking God, like, is he there? Is he with you, you know? And uh, <sighs> so I was so grateful because at that point, you know, I had, I was a full-blown Christian. And um, this was, you know, easily 10 years after he died. So it was... Um, beautiful to know that that he had received the Lord and asked the Lord into his heart and I was so grateful to this woman I just cried my eyes out right before my show <laughs> I had mascara dripping down my face but I did not care and I just gave her the biggest hug and I said thank you so much for telling me that you have no idea what a blessing this is to me and um what a gift and yeah she was crying too and it was just really really beautiful and we still follow each other on Instagram and stuff. <laughs> so I'm just really grateful for her. And thank you for hearing my story about um, my last words to my father. And um, yeah, you know, the relationship between a father and a daughter is so tender and so precious and so <sighs> heart-wrenching. <laughs> whether it's a strong, beautiful, thriving relationship or whether it's you know, a, um, absent, um, uh, difficult relationship that has a lot of challenges. And, um, I, I just feel like every child deserves a mom and a dad. And it's just not, um, it's just not, it's such a pandemic. It is such a pandemic. So many kids do not have two parents. And, um, you know, we wonder why this world is so backwards. I really tr honestly believe that that has so much to do with it. Boys need fathers. Boys need mothers. Girls need fathers. Girls need mothers. 
God made it that way for a reason. <laughs> so, God bless you guys. Peace of Christ. Hey, you guys, if this video blessed you in any way, I pray that you will subscribe. And I also pray that you'll press that little button next to the subscribe because that is an alert button and it will give you a notification every single time there's a brand new Cal Preach. And of course, share because sharing is caring and you just never know who's going to find the peace of Christ. Amen.